the weatherman would baptize people in the hog stalls. Now, the, hog, the reason it's called the hog stall, the hogler, I have to tell you, there's these natural limestone bowl shaped indentations where the water rolls down into it, and the people would get a bonfire going and heat up big boulders and roll them into these pools and get the water boiling to get the hair of the hog, the hair off the hog. So it was called hog stall, hogler. And when it wasn't hog scolding time, they would baptize people in these pools as well. And I, so I imagine one of the little girls standing up on that bluff. I tried to put myself in her shoes and imagine what it was like for her to go be baptized for the first time at the hog stall. And I took a lot of the information from a book that he wrote about his grandfather. Some of the, some of the story about the baptism was right from your book, Lance. And I believe this is the first time we've got to play this for you in the audience. So I'm very excited. And I'm gonna just I'm gonna play a yeah. I'm gonna play a, a little preacher pump organ that I have. I'm loud enough to hear. Um, this is a, a folding preacher pump organ, the kind that I I, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody didn't we'll drag one of these over to Hawkstall Hall one day and play. It, it so it folds up into a little suitcase and doesn't require any electricity. Oh, one more thing I want to say. One time we went and sang this for Ed and Liza, and um, and Ed is very very religious, and, and so we just sing gospel songs when we're in his home. And but I sang this song for him, and Ed told us that he also preached at that church and baptized people in the Hog Falls as well. So this is called the Bluff Church Baptism. I'll send this out to Lance and Stephen. <laughs> I love them Sunday mornings when we all dressed up in our bed. Mama put her bonnet on and Papa wore his woolen vest. I had just one pair of shoes, now too small for my pretty feet. But I laced them up, then we'd all walk down to Hawksville Creek and listen to Brother Weatherman preach.
what, what an interesting challenge to try to get every one of those little tributaries into one song. Then it comes with her. So that's what we've tried to do here. And also to honor Jay, uh, Jay Schneider, for, for his efforts to go explore the lake. So we, we dedicate this to Jay, to Jay, and it's actually called Jay's Song. People can play it if you'd like. It's it's a wonderful thing to hold and touch an Estelle guitar. And this one is a real player. Yeah. Really and even if you don't play, just stick your ear against it and give it a strum, and you can hear all the beautiful stuff, the saw blades and everything, and it makes it such magical sound. And we'd love to talk to everybody. And and, and uh, after the thing. And so if, you, if you need to need to, that's okay. Just whatever whatever you need to. But if you want to stick around and hear some question answers, we'd love. To. So our, our last song is the first song that was written for this project, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a, for me. For me, this is kind of a, a very personal uh, a thing um, that I had to go through. I, it was a process I had to go through before we could get started. 
um, having grown up on Beaver Lake and having uh, these precious childhood memories of growing up on Beaver Lake. I mean, for me, it was like paradise to be this kid just running free on LaRue, which is a peninsula, so it was pretty safe for me to explore the entire peninsula. And I would take my little canoe or my sailboat and venture for many miles uh, on my own or with my brother and, and come back at dark. And it was just, for a kid, it was just amazing. You know, I just really, really have fond memories of those days. But as an adult, I have become mindful of the other side of what it means to build a reservoir. And uh, that's a little harder for me to process. See, we've been asked to write a whole album about Beaver Lake and, and, and taking care of Beaver Lake, but I'm a little bit uncomfortable with building reservoirs. Um, you know, there's a lot of precious things down there that were covered up. That was probably the prettiest land in this part. And there was a lot of people living down there. And there's churches and there's, there's blacksmith shops and there's schools and there's cemeteries. They moved most of the cemeteries out of there. But, um, and not only that, but it's habitat. And a river habitat has a very diverse aquatic um, mm. fauna, you know, exactly. assortment. In fact, we're very glad that they didn't dam the Buffalo River. It was one of the only rivers that was not dammed. Which no, that we ought to mention that, I yeah. suppose. Oh. If you don't mind me, uh, just a little uh, up, up front, uh, heads up on this. Uh, we've a sequel to this project. Many people have suggested, and we think it's a good idea as well, that we follow once a river up with a new project, just like this one, kind of like a second round, called Still a River, about the buffalo. Uh, and, uh, we're real excited about it. Um, we're in the process of looking for funding, and the reason we need funding is because we want to use this model that was used by, for Once a River, which is to provide free concerts. So that All over the state. Nobody has to pay. That's really important. Also, we want to be able to give CDs to everybody that comes. And we just think it's a wonderful formula. We want to try to repeat it, but we want to do it for the buffalo. And so that's up and coming. And if you know anybody that uh, wants to uh, help make that happen, let us know. So we're going to... This is my favorite picture. So, you know, but here, well, I have one thing I haven't finished. I said all, those, I, I said all, my, all my, uh, my thoughts about the downside of a reservoir. And I was just speaking about the animals, too. You lose a lot of animals. You gain some animals, too. Uh, some, some birds have come here because of the lake. Um, but, you know, it's really not about reservoirs. You know, we built that reservoir. That's, that's done. You know, we're not changing that. Um, it's really about water. And it doesn't matter whether it's in your sink or in a creek or in a river or in a lake built by man. It's still precious water, and there's only so much of it, and it's our job to take care of it. And so that's, you know, in, in the end it was really pretty simple. It's not about, you know, whether we should ever build a reservoir again. And it's also a very wonderful place to go recreate and visit. And I want to, before we do the song, I want to thank the library for doing Yeah, how about that? <laughs> now you can show the picture. The final PowerPoint of the evening. This is, this is Kelly and his brother. When he, <laughs> Kelly's a little one. Four years old. This is in 1964 when they were just filling the lake. It was kind of like a bathtub. It took a while for the lake to fill. So you can see it's kind of a short distance across behind him to the back of it. Now it's a long, long way from that same vantage point. But um, this is Kelly on the... So we want to thank you all so much. It's called What's Done is in 64 they flooded the land Four years old, I could hardly understand I've only the faintest memory Of a cool wide river beneath my feet Saw the forest cut down. Folks lose their homes, cemeteries drown. Only saw that clear blue lake. The joy of my childhood, well, I'm not forsake. But what's done is done, and it's time.